D-Day, June 6, 1944, the long-anticipated invasion had arrived. Operation Overlord was an audacious gamble. Churchill called it the most complicated military operation in history. 150,000 Allied soldiers, 7,000 naval vessels, and 11,000 aircraft would attempt to breach Hitler's vaunted Atlantic Fortress and begin the liberation of Europe. The landings along 80 kilometers of Normandy coastline would target five beaches. The U.S. would storm two, codenamed Utah and Omaha. The British had two, Gold and Sword, and the Canadians would land at Juneau. The most heavily defended beaches were Omaha and Juneau. Allied planners forecasted heavy casualties, the Canadians predicting over 2,000 at Juneau alone, including 600 by drowning. 15,000 soldiers of Canada's 3rd Infantry Division would assault Juneau. To the east, 500 Canadian paratroopers would be dropped to protect the beach's flank. Supporting the landings were 10,000 sailors and 110 vessels of the Royal Canadian Navy. And overhead, 230 Canadian bombers, while 15 squadrons of Spitfires and Typhoons attacked the beach's defences. Bill Wilson was a 19-year-old gunner on HMCS Ottawa and had a front row seat. We had no idea of the magnitude of the operation and the amount of detail that had gone into the planning. They'd been planning it for over a year. Around about 5.30 in the morning, we really weren't quite sure what we were going to see. And what we saw had never been seen by any man on this earth before. And then as the sun rose, we could see the hulls, and then eventually we could see the ships and the horizon was just packed jammed with ships. Juno Beach was 10 kilometers wide, flat, and sandy. The Canadian units would land from east to west. The North Shore Regiment from New Brunswick, next to the Queen's own rifles from Toronto, the Regina rifles, Winnipeg rifles, and the Canadian Scottish from Victoria. Supporting the infantry were the duplex drive swimming tanks. The Armada commenced fire at dawn. The first waves hit the beach around 8 a.m., landing at low tide to avoid the obstacles. They faced a deadly sprint across the beaches, which they hoped would be mitigated by the Navy's deadly barrage. Unfortunately, most of the German defenders at Juneau had survived and were waiting for the first wave, comprised of 100 assault craft carrying over 4,000 soldiers. The ramps went down, and the Germans were waiting. Men fell in droves, but the survivors bravely pressed on. Ten bloody minutes later, the tanks began to emerge like leviathans out of the sea. The Canadians attacked with Bren guns, grenades and bayonets. Bolstered by the tanks, they systematically eliminated the German strongpoints one by one. But the attackers suffered heavy losses. The reserve battalions and artillery came ashore and overwhelmed the remaining resistance. By noon, Juno Beach was all Canadian. By 9 p.m., the Canadians had advanced 10 kilometers and were ordered to dig in. The forward units had reached their first day objectives. The invasion had succeeded, but more heavy fighting lay ahead in the days to follow. Incredibly, the Canadians had breached the second toughest beach defenses, landed 15,000 soldiers, thousands of tanks, artillery guns, and vehicles of all types, and then aggressively drove inland. Casualties were lower than predicted, but nonetheless costly. 340 were killed, 574 wounded, and 47 captured. I think it was the best day of the war for the world. We did free all of Europe. Canada was there for a little nation like ours. And it still amazes me. There were five beaches and Canada had one of them. And the Brits and the Americans trusted us to look after that beach. And we did, in spades. On D-Day, the Canadians breached Hitler's Atlantic Wall and drove further inland than our allies, the only nation to reach its D-Day objectives. It was the triumph of Canada's citizen soldiers, every one a volunteer against Nazi oppression. 
Our pilots were second to none. Our air crew were second to none. Our sailors, I know, were as good as the best. And our soldiers, unparalleled. Great Canadians. And I happened to be there. I was one of them. So some of them didn't come back. And most of them are now gone. So there's a few left like me, uh, for whatever reason. Would I do it again? In spades. Great day. Great day for the world. What they achieved on D-Day was incredible. The chances of success were slim, yet they prevailed. They were truly monumental Canadians. Canadians.